Well, good morning and greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We are gathered this morning to celebrate life. This is, this is not a funeral. This is a memorial dedication to one of God's saints that has gone home. That's what this is today. Uh, God's Word reminds us that there are times to grieve, and so we should. But it also reminds us that those of us have a distinction when we belong to the Lord Jesus Christ, that there's a confidence. In 2 Corinthians 5, we hear these words. We are always confident, knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. But we are confident, yes, well pleased, rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. I want you to make sure you heard that. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. That's why we're here to celebrate life. And Eva Elaine Mitchell is not dead. She just left this temporary life in exchange for the eternal life she now has with the Lord. She just changed addresses, folks, is what she did. So as we begin this uh, celebration this morning, as, as, as we look towards that, uh, we're going to have some, some details of Elaine's life, and, or for some, Jane's life. It depends on where you live and grew up. On March 8, 1924, in Iconium, Missouri, Joe Wood and Audrey Warren Wood had a daughter. Her name, of course, is Elaine. Elaine lived 91 years in this world and left this world on January 5th to live in eternity with her Lord. On May 26, 1951, in a beautiful military wedding in Greenville, South Carolina, Elaine married Lauren Mitch, Claiborne Mitchell. For 30 years, she, she shared her husband's Air Force career, traveling and living in many parts of the world. She uh, enjoyed her position as a military wife and and honored Mitch's participation in the military. Following Mitch's retirement as a pilot in, in 1972, they moved to Neosho, where they spent the rest of their lives. They celebrated 50 years of marriage just prior to Mitch's death in 2002. Elaine and they, Mitch were wonderful parents and two wonderful daughters. Now, I'm, they paid me to add the wonderful daughters in there, just want you to know. But they were dearly loved, and, and their parents invested so much into their lives. Elaine was a lifelong educator. She possessed a lifetime teaching certificate, beginning her career at age 17. Not only was she a teacher, she was a professional student, always finding ways to make learning fun. Reading, sewing, collecting articles or pictures, especially of, of people hugging, was, was some of her pastime. She, she enjoyed those things. Elaine was a woman of incredible hospitality. Her greatest joy was spending time in conversation with those that she loved. As a young woman, Elaine had trusted in Jesus as her Savior. That, that's why Elaine radiated Christ's love in all that she did. Anyone that had met Elaine loved her almost immediately. Throughout her life, many people considered her their best friend, and several friends named their daughters after her. She became a surrogate sister, aunt, mother, grandmother, to numerous loved ones. She was a giver in so many senses of the word, especially in the areas of wisdom and time. She constantly looked for ways to invest in people's lives to help them. Letter writing was one of her daily activities that she used from her gift of encouragement. Greatest of all was her faithful daily prayer time for her family and friends. I was often reminded by her that she was praying for me as her pastor. Elaine leaves us a legacy of Christ-like love. It's a blessing to know such an amazing woman as Elaine Mitchell. It is so difficult to try to sum up her life and try to do it in a short time frame. So I'm going to suggest to you that we're not going to try to sum up her life. We're just going to try to hit some high points. So with that being said, let's... Uh, Let's pray this morning. Lord and God, we, we couldn't possibly be able to, to squeeze into a few moments here a life that you arranged and molded and built for so long. So God, we, we want to bring glory to you this morning, honor to you in, in having a time to celebrate this life that you bring. 
And it's only because of what you've done that, that we have any life whatsoever. So God, we, we see in you that you are the life and the life giver. So God, this morning we, we do want to celebrate this life and we do want to participate now in, in sharing memories and thoughts of, of one of yours, a servant that serves so well. And God, again, thank you for the call in her life. Thank you for all that right now we, we have received from the way that you blessed her. Lord, we love you and we praise you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Thank you so much for that. As I said earlier, we're here to celebrate life. It's easy when you have someone like Elaine. She loved life. Elaine loved the military life, being a, from a military family. I, I understand what that means. The military life was one of honor, respect, duty, responsibility, sacrifice, and nobility. She loved the fact that her husband Mitch was military, and she loved her part of being a military wife. The military was a blessing to her, and I believe that she was a blessing to the military. I think she uh, helped them a lot. Elaine encouraged and supported her daughters in all their activities. She was all about helping her daughters to be successful. She spent time being their teacher, mentor, and mom. When the military moved them, Mitch and Elaine would first go to the community and choose a school and then find a place to live. They wanted to make sure that they gave them every advantage for success. She was always building the girls up, always encouraging them, always, always wanting to see them do the best they could, and never being discouraging, never putting them down or demeaning to them, always encouraging when I asked Michelle what words described her mother, she said, very simply, grace. Elaine always extended grace to others. No matter how they lived or what they were doing, she showed grace to them. Anne's words for her mother were integrity and wisdom. She shared her wisdom with everyone, sometimes even if you didn't ask for it. Both of them said their mother was a giver that cared. Thus, she was a caregiver. And I really believe that probably most of us in this room received some of that caregiving from Elaine. She didn't talk about giving. She just gave. It was something that was part of her, her godly character. You see, Elaine didn't impact people. She infected people. Her smile, humor, encouragement, straight talk, care, Love and even being a little ornery at times rubbed off, off on those around her. At this time, I want to share a personal memory about Elaine, and in a few moments, I'm going to invite you to share some of your memories with Elaine. And so while I'm sharing mine, you might think of some of your thoughts and some of the memories that you had, because we do want to have an opportunity to share that this morning. Well, when Pam and I moved here, Elaine took us in immediately. She housed us, at times fed us, always prayed for us, was always encouraging. She passed on some furniture to us because she knew that we would need it when we moved into a house here. She constantly asked about our children and the ministries they're in, and she was constantly praying for them. She even passed on some furniture to some of our children in ministry. She was always asking about what they needed and then she always said, well, let them know I'm praying for them. Her love of life, concern for ministry, and constant care captured Pam in my heart. We couldn't help but love and appreciate her. We couldn't help but look for her, seek her out to see her smile and to hear her words. I will never forget her, and I always will enjoy more than the memory, enjoy her very presence the way that she presented herself at all times. Well, there's some stories that I could probably share, but I think that the ones that have known her sometimes even longer or, or even just for a moment has some stories you'd like to share. So I'd like to give you a chance, and I'm going to just meet you down on the floor, and if you don't mind, I'm going to let you just kind of share for a little bit. So before I get down there, who's going to be first? All right. All right. If you don't mind, just standing and sharing with us. I have known Elaine ever since she came to Neil Show. She was a school teacher, and uh, I met her very well. But my husband was the best man at their wedding in Greenville, South Carolina, because Mitch and he were called back to the service at the same time. Uh, and uh, I was one that named my daughter after Elaine. I have Kathy Elaine because that was my person that I thought 
Bible study. Yeah, thank you so much. All right, someone else. see sis, you just kind of see Elaine in right there, okay? Someone else? Give me the rock. I got to know Elaine as she was a member of our Sunday morning uh, Bible study class. And uh, all the descriptions I've heard of her are just hard right on. She's such a, uh, a lady of character and and always had a smile and always gave an encouraging word uh, to me as I taught. But one thing that she also was, and, and her uh, grandchildren noticed this, is that she was a, a lady in prayer. And, and one morning she came in excited and during our prayer time, she said, oh, I've got good news. We have a new baby in the family. And uh, asked if we would uh, pray for that baby. And so we did. And uh, we asked for God's guidance and direction. And you could tell she loved her family and was excited about a new one. And I remember how much longer it was after that. She called me at home one morning and says, Guess what? We have another baby. Would you pray? And so we prayed right there on the phone and asked for God's blessing on, on that baby as we did the other one. And that, that he would be active in their lives guy directly at this that she did it. And I know that she was an influence uh, for her whole family. And just uh, so thankful I got to know her the short time that we've been here uh, back in the ocean. Thank you, Rob. All right, someone else? And if, if you want to make your way up here, that'd be fine too. It might be just as easy. You need that shirt. <laughs> well, I'm uh, speaking mostly from the standpoint of my mother. My mother and Elaine were best friends. They're having a good time today. <laughs> Elaine was in my mother's Sunday school class all the time she was here. Years and years, long taught Sunday school here for over 40 years. So it's been a pleasure, and, a, and a, I can't describe having a friend like her. I have a roll top desk, antique roll top desk in my home now from her that her daughter's approved of in memory of my mother. So that's basically why I'm speaking on her behalf. But she's always been a dear friend of mine, and uh, I always called her mom. Never hesitated, and she just smiled. So uh, it's a real pleasure to know her. Hello. Um, my name is Jennifer. I was new to Calvary <clears throat> and uh, have been saved. And, uh, I got a call one day from Elaine Mitchell asking me to come over and to meet with me. And to be honest, I had to go down to my friends that I knew saying, who is Elaine Mitchell? I don't know who this woman is who's calling me. Um, so I'm searching church directories and trying to figure out who I'm about to go meet because I have no idea that I, that I went. <clears throat> and uh, but I went to her home and I uh, just wanted to share with me uh, Kind of her walk. Uh, she had recently done a Nancy Lee DeMoss study that absolutely impacted and changed her life. And she just wanted to share with me what that did and her walk with the Lord and how it had changed her. Even at an older age, she grew deeper with Jesus. And uh, at that moment, we just had a kindred spirit. We just connected. And uh, I've always just Walking into the church and seeing Elaine always made me smile. I just felt connected with her. Uh, we did spend a lot of time together, but um, we just knew each other in spirit. So. Thank you. Someone else? Hello. 
McLean was a good friend and a patient, a long time patient of mine. We both had mutual respect for each other. I always look forward to seeing that dear lady up in my office. For a year now, I thought of her every evening as she gave me a book for meditation before bedtime. Every evening. Thank you, love. My name is Kent Robinson. I pastor uh, Little Life Church here in the Osho. Elaine Mitchell was one of those ladies that transcended denominational barriers. Uh, I had uh, met her through one of the ladies in our church. Her name was Margaret. And Margaret and Elaine and Harriet were the three amigos. Uh, that I come to love and appreciate so very, very much. And uh, they would come and visit periodically. Never once did I try to get them away from Calvary though I wanted to. <laughs> uh, but needless to say, uh, I've come to love and appreciate her. And when Margaret uh, passed away several years ago, Elaine said something to me how profound Margaret had the influence that Margaret had on her life, the friendship, they were both educators, uh, loved each other and loved the Lord together. And so they would come see me periodically. But I got a letter from Elaine, um, probably sometime, I won't say, uh, latter part of October, first of November. It was a card, and inside it was a full page letter that she had written to me to encourage me because I had a lot of physical issues this past year. And as I read that letter, it was the most encouraging, uplifting thing. And everybody that knew her loved her. But not only in this wonderful church, pastor, but people outside of her church that attended other churches knew and fell in love with her because of her great love and, and compassion and heart. So what an honor it is to know this great lady. Someone else? On behalf of my wife, who passed away just a few days ago, I walked there with a deepest gratitude. Thank you, man. Very quietly, with no commotion, she came and visited my wife, and except for family members, she was the last person to visit my wife before she passed away. Our eternal gratitude to her their well. Well, I have a question to ask y'all. Did Elaine make you feel like you were the only special person in her life? <laughs> uh, we uh, got a Christmas card from her. And it's the first Christmas card we got this year, it said, when are you coming back to Neosho? We live in St. Joseph. And um, when we would come, sometimes she would give up her house for us. And I mean, I just felt like, boy, we must really be special. But we lost our son this year, and uh, he's 26, but before uh, he passed away, our university gave him an honorary degree, and Elaine came up that morning uh, in April, and we were wondering if she'd be able to make it, but when her family went in to wake her up early in the morning, she had already gotten up, gotten dressed, and she got back in bed and pulled the covers up, <laughs> and so she was ready to go. And I just, we just loved her so much, and we're just so thankful for her life. Thank you. Our families have known the Bollingers for a long time, our children and their children, and uh, of course we knew Elaine well. Um, there are a lot of troubling things in the earth today, and, uh, but not your mother. 
She, uh, she's a grandma that uh, you can respect. And that, that's getting rare, really. Very gracious person. Someone to honor and love. And uh, Debbie, we, we were the special ones. That, <laughs> she's a wonderful person. And, uh, and just God's creation, God did that. But uh, we praise God for God bless you folks. Thank you. Someone else? I feel so blessed to have a grandma who wasn't just my grandma, but she was such a good friend. And she's been such a good friend to me for so long, and I really enjoyed the last, you know, I went to college three hours from here, so from college on, just regular visits out here have been um, a part of my routine, a part of my life, and grandmother was, <laughs> she's so, she was just so fun to be with, too. Um, she would, she's got this honor side that I just love, and I've always felt, you know, like we could, we just had fun together. Um, she loved driving over the hills and she would slap my leg. You know, she'd make me drive. She'd be like, now take your foot off the gas. And, and she would, she just wanted to go over the hills and let the, the hills take us where, where they wanted to take us. And she would just giggle the whole time. And it was, you know, we had a lot of different talks and a lot of times I just, you know, I cuddled her out of the bed and we'd just talk. And, uh, I think I've never met a woman of more integrity and more love. I mean, those are the words I just think about when I think about my grandmother. She just, she just was so fair and so loving, and she just, I mean, there was never a question of anything that she did. Her motives were always so genuine and pure and good. And, um, I just am so, I just, I feel so lucky. I just feel so lucky to have been her granddaughter. And she just loved each and every one of you. I know so much. Like, I can say that um, from the depths of my heart. That she just, she loved every single one of you. And so many people who aren't even here, she just loved, loved you guys. So thanks for I shared this at her 90th birthday party, so I'm going to try and share it here. We'll see. Um, but Psalm 24 says, um, What man is there that desires life and loves many days may, that he may see good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Turn away from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. And I, my grandma was one that she sought for peace. And the joke in our family is everything had to be fair, fair, very fair. <laughs> and so, but the, you know, that speaks volumes to me because she did. She sought for peace because she loved the Prince of Peace. And that's one thing that I love about her. And as much as she was a giver, you all need to know, um, she also liked hiding money. And so there was a day that uh, somebody gave me a $100 bill at dinner, and I put the $100 bill behind me. Well, <laughs> A little bit later, I left the room. She took the hundred dollar bill and she hid it, and she and, and I didn't know because I had already forgotten <laughs> where I put it. And so, anyway, I came back and then uh, later that night she she came and she told my mom, "Here's the hundred dollar bill. I might have forgotten where I hid it from her, and, and that might not be good." <laughs> but she was constantly playing tricks like that. Always had such a sense of humor and was just so sweet. And there's there's so many many things. I can say about her, but I do just want to take the time as, as a grandchild, as her child, and just say, um, we rise up and we call her blessed, and we bless the name of the Lord because he's the one that did that, and so grateful that God would give us an example of, to follow. One of her things that she would always ask, even if this was after Paul's funeral, and we came home, and um, she said, well, honey, what's next? What's next? And for me, I think what's next is turn away from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it and keep, keep living that legacy as she would want us to and follow Christ with all of our hearts and be that person of prayer and person of surrender. She, she was learning to surrender and to watch that process in her 90s was a very precious thing to know. It's never too late to surrender to the Lord and to say, yes, God, whatever you want for my life. So we bless her and we bless the Lord. Anyone else? 
I can tell you about some of that fairness. Now, if you're playing a game at her house, her motto is, you don't play a game unless you intend to win. So, she, she would try to beat you at the game. So. Anyone else? When I think of Elaine, uh, a lot of words come to mind that uh, reflect Christ. She loved, she gave, she served, she showed the partiality, um, humble, gracious. She was truly um, a vessel, indeed of self, and filled with her burden Savior. Thank you so much. Anyone else?
but it was just a few days ago. And she gave me a little verse, and I'm not even a Baptist. <laughs> but her love, just genuine, just that sparkling look in her eyes, I see it in her, in her kids and her grandkids, and I'm just so blessed to have met her. And I, I agree. I, uh, well, except for the separate channel, I guess it is. But seriously, I mean, their, their lives reflect the godliness of of Elaine. I think that's that's been something that's been awesome to watch. Well, Miss Elaine Mitchell, something I want to share with you is she would go to any length to give. And when I was taking my first trip to Africa, she comes up to me and she said, "Miss Pam, I need you to do me a favor." Okay, what is that? She said, I've got this little raggedy Ann doll, and I have a dear, dear friend down in Rogers, and she needs this doll. It can't just be any raggedy Ann. This one needs to go to Africa, so it can have been to Africa. So she sends this little doll with me to Africa, and I take pictures of it and write stories about the different villages we went to and all this stuff, and bring it back home. And then Elaine and I went down to Rogers to deliver this uh, doll to her dear friend. I don't know many friends that would go to that lake to, to give like that. And she's also given to my mom, who she hardly knows at all. I think she maybe met her one time. But she gave a book, a meditation book, Jesus Calling. And my mom can't speak. She can't write. She just sits. But she can hear and she can see. And um, so the workers that, that take care of her read to her out of this book. And we currently have a worker that is not a Christian that um, is now reading out of this book, and I have faith that she's going to come to know Christ because of this lady Mitchell. Hey. Okay. A lot, of, a lot of great memories. And I would urge you to continue to allow those to come to your mind and to your heart and and you celebrate that. You know, we've, uh, there's been a lot of things that we've mentioned this morning. The thing that's been over, overriding in this was her incredible love of the Lord. It just, it just stands out. She was all about the Lord, it seems like. I mean, that, it seems to be that that's what her heart was about. She, she came to a commitment to Christ in her 20s that, and to her, it was more of a process than an event. It was something that, that God finally, after so much time, finally said, now, now is the day of salvation. And, and, then, and then it was after that length of time, she, she committed to say, yes, you are my Lord. At 82 years old, she was determined to read the Bible in its entirety over the course of a year. She, she'd realized that she'd really never read it all the way through its entirety. So at 82, she decided to do that. So she began, but see, she just didn't read it. She spent a great deal of time studying and putting, putting together personal notes through each and every time that she would read. And she did read it through. You see, her life was about testifying of God's greatness. And, and at 82 years old, she wanted to know Him more. Well, I don't know about you, after 60-something years of salvation, you'd think that she might know him, but she said, not enough. So she wanted to have that intimacy, even, even a greater understanding of him, so she continued to read. The most important part of today is telling you about the one who Elaine served, and that's Jesus. If you spend any time with her, as you've heard, that you would know about Jesus. Jesus was a, a part of Elaine's life. Jesus was Elaine's life. Everything she did was to honor her God, and, including her family. She wanted to honor God in her family. Well, why, why would she do that? Why was it so important for, for Elaine to spend her life honoring Jesus? Why not just live for yourself? And do what you want to do. Go where you want. Spend like you want. Well, the fact, uh, the truth is this. Elaine did do what she wanted, went where she wanted, and spent like she wanted. You see, when she became a follower of Jesus, God changed her wants. At an early age, when she gave her life to Jesus, 
that she wanted now to serve Jesus for the rest of her life. So everything she did, where she won, what, what she did, what she said, where she spent her money, is she wanted to serve Jesus now. So, yes, everything she did, she did exactly what she wanted to do. She wanted to serve her Savior. When you realize that you're a sinner and that you've been separated from God and you realize that you can't fix your sin and you realize that, that even though you try to be a better person and, and, and you try to become more caring, more loving, more kind, you realize that your problem is still sin. And that's what she realized at one time in her life. The Scripture says, All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That means that everyone in this room, everyone in this town, everyone in this state, everyone in this nation, and anyone that's ever lived on this planet except one has sinned. All. And the Bible also tells us the results of sin is eternal death and the eternal separation from God. Elaine understood that. I believe that was one of the things that pushed her because she didn't want anyone to go to hell. She didn't want anyone to be separated from God. You see, that's where this one who's never sinned comes in. God's Word tells us, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever would believe in Him would not perish, but would have eternal life. And that was her heart. Another verse says, God demonstrated His love towards us, and that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. So her heart was about the one who died for her. Why wouldn't she want to serve Him? Well, yes, the result of sin is death, and we understand that. And we understand that that is a separation from God, but that's when God says, the gift of a God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. God knows we're sinners. God knew we can't fix it. God knew that we're desperate. And in that desperation, that's when God sent the only way for salvation, the only way for forgiveness. He sent His Son Jesus, who died for our sin, so that that might bring salvation to us. See, it's in Christ and Christ alone that we're saved. That's where we get these promises from God's Word. In Acts 16, we have, Believe on the name of Jesus and you will be saved. And in Romans 10, 9, If you confess your mouth, with your mouth the, the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. And in John 3, 16, of course, we all know that. But how about verse 17 where it says, For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. That, 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 that's what it's about. And I want you to notice something in these promises of God about, you said you will be saved, you will be saved. God sent that you would be saved. I want you to notice something. It doesn't say you straighten up your life. It doesn't say you have to be perfect. It doesn't say you have to do some great deed to be saved. It says believe. When God calls, believe. That's what he says. Now, there's a lot of people that say, well, if we could just... If we could just fix ourselves, well, if we could just fix ourselves, Christ would not have had to die. But he did. You see, these truths, these truths are about her. At God's timing in her life, being called by God, she came to faith in him and gave her life to him. And by faith, she was committed to him. God forgave Elaine, gave her a new life, changed her once, and now changed her residence. That's, that's what we're here to celebrate, isn't it? Changed her residence. She's not here anymore. This is, a, this is an empty shell that's here, and, and we are so thankful that for the 91 plus years that she was here, we got to know her in this shell. But you see, <laughs> she's no longer here. We are, but she's not. She's already home. And that's, where we, and that's where we find our confidence. So that's where we find our confidence. That's where we find our comfort. You see, out of a grateful heart to her God, she served Him and was loyal to Him. That kind of brings us back to where we kind of started this morning. To be absent from the flesh is to be present with the Lord. She is present. If there's anyone here today being called by God to salvation, you can depend on this great truth. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And this morning, 
You don't have to put it off or shrug it off. You can say yes and say, God, you have called me. I receive that calling and I commit myself to you. Not because we are such a great person, but because he is a great God. Well, of all the things that Elaine did in her life, of all the things that we have reviewed this morning and will continue to review, is when she threw up her hands and said, <laughs> not me anymore, it's you. It's you, God. It's you. And her life at that point changed for all eternity. Jesus is the reason for Elaine's life, and our memory will be that. I, I believe the following song kind of sums up what Elaine lived for, and, and Pam's going to sing a song, and some of you know, in Christ alone. But I believe that that would sum up so much of her heart, and for us, her testimony. So would you, uh, would you listen with me?
from life's first cry to final breath. Jesus commands our destiny. No power in hell, no scheme of men can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns to take us home. Here in the power of Christ I stand. In Christ alone. Because of the blood of Jesus Christ and Elaine's acceptance of his love, there's so much in that song that gives us our understanding in Christ alone there is no other hope from birth to final breath she's home in Christ alone, she's home. Family, friends, she's home because of Christ alone. We have a montage that we want to, I say we, that the family wants to present. So at this time, we're going we're gonna to have that. So if you'd uh, enjoy this with us. Lane, what a joy it's been to know you for a long time. You have been such an encouragement to us all these many years. We cherish all the memories and good times that we have shared. I love you, Janie, and I think about you so often, and I think about the many, many times that we've spent together at home when we were growing up with our good parents. You know, we were so lucky to have the parents and to have one another. And we've been so blessed, Jane, to be to live to be 90 years old. And Janie, I love you so much. I have loved and admired you all of my life as a wonderful friend. I can still see you as my first grade teacher with your beautiful red hair when you were 17 and I was six. You made learning so much fun, I could hardly wait to get to school. You have been such a dear sister-in-law to me. In fact, I feel like we're true sisters. When Jack and I first got married, you welcomed me into the family, and we've loved each other ever since. I feel like that we've really been blessed to be in the same family. I love you. Elaine, when God created you, he blessed a whole lot of people, and you have been an inspiration to us all. Your family certainly reflects your loving and caring ways. Thank you for being part of our lives, too. The things that I admire about you most, uh, among other things, are your gentle spirit, your beautiful smile, and the concern that you show for others. I just want to thank you for just the sweet spirit that you have of the Lord uh, that you share so much with everyone that you come in contact with. Elaine, when God created you, He gave me a special blessing. I love and appreciate the way in which you are always so positive and supportive of Roger and I and the ministries that happen at our Calvary Church. Hi, Mrs. Mitchell. This is Paul Greer. And I just wanted to say thank you for all you've done for us and for me. I don't think I ever remember a time but that you always had a smile and something positive to say. You was always encouraging us in the Lord. I thank the Lord for you, for your lifestyle, for your charming, loving, giving person, because you show who Jesus is through your life. Grandma, you always had an interest in how we were thinking, uh, learning about the world around us, and you always spoke um, calmly, and you always had 
um, a good thing to say about those that were around you. And we are so grateful that we have a godly grandmother that loves the Lord. We love you. I want to tell you that I've always admired you, Elaine, for your propriety. That means in my heart, you doing things the right way. I'm not compromising. I just remember so many times just sitting there and us talking about what is the right choice or what's the right thing to do in this situation. Thank you for being you, for having a heart as big as the world. Mom, I just want to let you know how much I love you. And I thank the Lord for Mitch and your work in raising Anne and Michelle. And so, from the bottom of my heart, the greatest testimony and legacy that you are leaving on this planet is your two daughters. And I just want to let you know how much I love you. Mom, you have always been a great example of a grandmother of a mother-in-law and as a mother and encourager. You just always supported everything in prayer. No matter what we did, you supported us in prayer. You were always an example of praying. Your wisdom still stands firm. Your life as a Christian is still admired. You continue to influence your family, your grandchildren, and those around you. I miss Daddy. I miss him a lot. I think about him often. But without both of you and your legacy in my life and in Anne's life and in our grandchildren's lives, I don't know if our life could have been any richer. I feel honored. I feel blessed to call you my mother, share things about you, and I love you. Thank you for your many years of loving us and unconditional love that you have shown toward us. Thank you for your just how you have been faithful to Mitch and to love him and to love all people that you come in contact with, your cheerful attitude, and just all the things that you have done for us. I love you. I love you so much. I think about what a what an example you were to me always um, as an Air Force wife, entertaining people with true hospitality, putting their, their needs and who they were as first. People were always important to you, and that is one of the most important things that we should teach our families today, and I had that model before me, that people are always more important than projects. And I, I love that about you, Mom. It just seems like your love is, is boundless. It just goes on and on and on. And then when I think about how you so faithfully pray for all of us, I pray that I will grow old gracefully the way you have, that I can be a woman of prayer, I can be the godly Titus II woman that you are. I'm so grateful that God let me be your daughter. I love you, Mom. Well, as you can tell, as I said earlier, she didn't impact people, she infected people. Her, uh, her love, her generosity, her heart for God impacted us, infected us. And I pray that that infection continues. And we will continue to be constantly uh, aware of the great testimony of a great God. After the service today, if you want to talk to someone about your relationship to God. You're just not sure what that means. You've seen it. You've seen it displayed this morning through testimony. You've seen it displayed through, through truth of God's Word. And you still do not know, and, and yet you feel God tugging at your heart in this morning. I would love to be able to visit with you or some of our staff, uh, some of the family would visit with you. But if you feel that, then, then simply do what she did. Believe. Believe, accept that which God is offering. On behalf of Elaine's family, thank you so much for being here. Um, there's many that was here last night. There's many that's been here this morning. 
And uh, they're aware that <laughs> that's snowing. They're aware of that. And with that, they emphasize, please do not feel obligated to go to the graveside with them. It's, it's going to be a short trip, a short graveside, and then back for the family. Um, they don't want anybody in jeopardy. It's a one-lane road out there so uh, by the cemetery, and they just wanted you to not feel obligated. Most of what you heard this morning um, are the things they wanted you to hear. The family wanted you to hear about her mom, but more, their mom or grandmother, but more importantly, about her God. And that's what they wanted you to hear. Let's... Um, Let's conclude with prayer and then we'll dismiss. God, we, we are grateful that we are able to see a life that displays who you are. A life that brings glory to you and honors you. A life that is lived out in celebration of what you did with your grace. God, we thank you that her salvation that you called her to, and, and, and God, that she, <clears throat> she accepted the call so, so quickly and said, yes, yes, yes. It might have been weeks, months, days, or even years that, that you were putting that into place, but God, at that time, at that time, you saved her. And out of that incredible salvation that you placed in her, she has lived her life for you. God, let that be an example and a testimony to us. But God, let us also embrace that same relationship that she had. And that relationship needs to be ours. Thank you again for all that was said this morning because those were words that you'd placed through the life of Elaine. But God, thank you that they belong to you because all of it starts with you. Lord, we love you. We thank you. We praise you. Bring strength. Bring confidence. Bring comfort to the family. But God, we know all that is in you. We love you. Thank you so much for loving us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen.